Hello again, and welcome to our May 2022 edition of Quick Kit. Links to everything we mentioned will be down in the description below. Let's get into it. May has been a pretty busy month for camera releases, but let's start with by far the biggest one out of the bunch, the announcement of the Arri Alexa 35. If you haven't already, make sure to go and check out our full 15 minute length in-depth first look video, the link to which is right here or in the description below. The 35 features a brand new 4.6K Super 35 sensor that is capable of capturing 17 plus stops of dynamic range. The camera also features Arri's new reveal color science pipeline, which aims to bring more natural color and tone to the already industry leading image quality that Arri is known for. It also features a new enhanced sensitivity mode for improved low light performance, 19 different recording formats, the ability to shoot 4K 120p and a new textures mode where you can really dial in the character of your image in a whole new way. All in a newly designed compact, light and robust body with a comprehensive range of I.O. The Alexa 35 is a worthy addition to the legendary Alexa line and I can't wait to use it more. Fujifilm has announced their latest flagship hybrid camera, the X-H2S, and it looks to be their most video focused one yet. It features their latest X-Trans 5 stacked backside illuminated 26.1 megapixel sensor paired with their latest generation 64-bit X processor 5 and the camera has some pretty beefy specs for a mirrorless camera at its price point. It has the ability to capture 6.2K 30p, 4K 120 and 1080p 240 as well as the ability to record a few different flavours of ProRes internally as well. It can also output Blackmagic RAW or ProRes RAW via the full-size HDMI has a 6.2K 3x2 open gate mode and features Fujifilm's new F-Log2 log curve so it can capture up to 14 stops of dynamic range. It also has all the same bells and whistles you would expect from an X-Series camera. It has up to 7 stops of in-body image stabilization, improved autofocus performance and solid photographic features and performance, making it a good looking hybrid option at a good price point as well. We had one in to test a couple of weeks back so our video looking at it will be out as soon as possible. Let us know if you have any questions about the camera in the comments below. With this new camera, Fujifilm also announced the XF 18-120mm f4 and 150-600mm f5.6-8 lenses. RED have announced the availability of the V-Raptor production pack, as well as a few accessories. The production pack bundles the camera with a comprehensive kit of accessories, which could be a good option for filmmakers eyeing up the Raptor. Those of you following Red CEO Jared Land would have also seen that Red has opened up registration on purchasing their upcoming XL version of the V-Raptor, which is a more feature-rich, larger and pricier version of the V-Raptor that they released last year. If you want to put your name down or learn more, you can via the link in the description below. Jared also teased a new 8K Super 35 V-Raptor body-styled camera in his Instagram post, which I'm really interested to get my hands on, and I'm sure anyone shooting wildlife or sport will also be too. Fingers crossed we learn some more about what sensor they are using in this too, as from Jared's post, it does sound like it might be a new sensor. Canon has announced two new bodies in their R series of mirrorless cameras, the R7 and the R10. Both of these cameras feature APS-C size sensors, which have a rough crop of 1.6 when compared to full frame. The R7 is the more fully featured and more expensive out of the two. It features a 32.5 megapixel sensor, 5-axis in-body stabilization, can capture 4K 60 in 4210 bit with no crop on the sensor, and also features a 4K UHD fine mode, which downscales the full 7K sensor to UHD, though this does have thermal and frame rate limitations. It can also capture 120 frames per second in full HD, uses IPB compression only, and does have the option to shoot in Canon C-Log3 log curve. Other than that, it features a similar body design and feature set as you'd expect from a more photography focused Canon mirrorless camera. And for its price, it looks like quite a nice option. The R10 is a much smaller compact camera, and features a different 24.2 megapixel sensor. It has a much more stripped back design and feature set. It cannot record C-Log3, but it can still capture 10-bit 42 when shooting in HDRPQ, and it features the same UHD fine mode for downscaling the 6K sensor to UHD. I think the R7 looks like a more interesting option for hybrid shooters, and with the release of the Fuji X-H2S, we finally have some more competition again in the APS-C mirrorless hybrid market. With these new cameras, Canon also released two new RFS APS-C zoom lenses, the 18-45 f4.5-6.3 IS STM and the 18-150 f3.5-6.3 IS STM. These both look more focused towards stills users than video though, though it is good to see some more affordable RF mount lenses hitting the market. 
The original Lab Probe lens has become legendary for how unique the imagery you can create with it is, and how affordable it is as well. And earlier this month, Lara released the Peri Probe, which is very similar to the original Probe lens, with some refinements and the new periscope attachment. This new attachment opens up a different way to be creative with the Probe, which has already allowed users to create some really insane compositions, especially when you realise that this new lens can be rotated 360 degrees. The Peri Probe comes with both the regular and 90 degree attachment, and you can easily swap between the two different attachments, which isn't possible with the old Probe. You also can't use the Peri Probe attachment with the original lens. It also has a thread on the tip of the lens, which is cool as it means you could attach a light, for example, as you do need an absolute load, as it still has the same maximum aperture of T14 as the old lens. The lens also features a robust cine housing, comes in a solid case, and is only a couple of hundred pounds more than the regular probe, which makes it a no-brainer if you do want to pick one up. Let us know what's the coolest thing you've seen shot with a probe lens in the comments below. Smorig has been slowly releasing more and more lighting products over the past few months, and earlier this month they released two new Cobb LED fixtures as well as a few lighting stands. The 220D and the 220B are similar to the 120 versions that we looked at earlier this year, but bring a bump in output and size. We were actually really impressed with the 120 fixtures when we looked at them earlier this year, and these look just as well featured with solid photometrics and an attractive price to boot. If you want to learn more about them, check out our video via the link in the description below. With these new fixtures, they also released two new light stands, the RAS280 and the RAS280A. The A variant looks the more interesting as it includes a boom arm, but they look like they could be solid, affordable options. But of course, I would need to actually check them out before 100% recommending them. Nanlite has announced their latest lighting fixture, the Forza 60C, full spectrum RGB LAC compact Cobb LED fixture. We have seen RGB ACL fixtures from Arri and Prolight over the past few years, so it's interesting to see Nanlite also getting into the space with such a compact and versatile looking fixture. It looks to have solid photometrics, is very compact and lightweight, and has a large range of accessories surrounding it, which will make it a very useful fixture for many situations. We have really liked some of Nanlite's previous products, and this new fixture looks pretty unique, and I can't wait to try one out. Continuing on from the 1x1 Gemini Hard panel that was released last October, Light Panels has updated their 2x1 with the same TIR lens treatment. The Gemini 2x1 Hard takes the robust and lightweight 2x1 soft design and brings the lensing technology from the 1x1 Hard resulting in a versatile high output 500 watt fixture. The included modifiers allow you to easily switch between a 20 degree hard light source or a 100 degree soft wide source in a matter of seconds. It also features everything you'd expect in a modern RGBW W LED fixture. Great connectivity options and good light quality. Let us know what your go-to light is in the comments below. And if you want to learn more about the 2x1 hard, check out our blog post about it via the link in the description. Rode announced their second generation of their incredibly popular Rodecaster, the Rodecaster Pro 2. It's priced at roughly £200 more than the original Pro, but does feature various improvements over it. This new Rodecaster is aimed at being not only a great audio solution for podcasters, but for a wider range of content creators, whether that's streaming, music production, or just content creation. It's been designed from the ground up, features four combo analog inputs, two USB-C inputs, and Rode's new Revolution preamps, which should have enough power to drive quiet dynamic microphones like the widely used Shure SM7B without the need for a cloud lifter, which is great news for podcasters and streamers. It also features a bunch of new effects, filters and processors, all powered by Aphex processors. It looks very well featured considering its price point and could be a great solution for many creators. If you want to learn more about it, I've put a link to Rode's 12 minute long breakdown in the description. We've had the SanDisk Pro Dock 4 in our studio for a few months now. And it's a great system for dumping the massive amount of rushes that we shoot for our productions. And SanDisk has released another product in their Pro range, the Blade ecosystem. The system is aimed at being a working and shooting storage solution, with performance and convenience being the focus. This ecosystem consists of the SSD mags, SSD enclosures, and the dock. The SSDs are NVMe based, which means you can get transfer speeds of up to 2000 megabytes a second when paired with the enclosure, or 3000 megabytes a second when paired with the dock. They are available in one, two, and four terabyte versions and are housed in robust aluminium cases. The enclosure uses USB-C, which means you'll be able to use it across a good range of camera bodies, as well as with your portable workstation when on the go. The dock can handle four of these blades, providing up to 16 terabytes of really fast storage, which will be more than fast enough to edit from or ingest extremely quickly via the enclosure's Thunderbolt 3 interface. 
Right, let's get into our quick fire honorable mentions. Links to details about these are in the description. Kame TV announced their new gimbal vest, the GS16. Deity released the TC1, a new time code generator box, and TC SL1, a smart slate which is compatible with the new Sidus Audio app. Dizolo Film have announced their new range of Kata coin filters for the Kata series of cinema zooms, not the Kata Ace. DJI has released new firmware for the Mini 3 Pro. Edelkrone released the controller V2 for their motorized systems. Exascend released their Nitro series of CF Express Type B cards. Ignite Digi have shown off their new RCP translator for Red's DSMC3 series of cameras. Insta360 has announced the Sphere, a new 360 degree camera that attaches to the DJI Mavic Air 2 and DJI Air 2S. The Kipatai Strata mount for the V-Raptor is now available and shipping. OWC has released the Envoy Pro Mini, a crazy small fast thumb drive style SSD. Panasonic announced their latest Micro Four Thirds lens, the Leica DG Summerlux 9mm f1.7. Shape released the SVT-10K, a 75mm tripod system. Sweat has released a series of new USB-C DV style batteries, as well as a new 420 watt hour battery, the PBC420S. Small HD released a new 5 inch touchscreen HDMI monitor with a peak brightness of 2000 nits, the Action 5, which unfortunately is a Small HD exclusive. Roland announced their latest direct streaming AV mixer, the SR20HD, and lastly, Tilt have released new cages from the Ninja 5, 5 Plus, and Shinobi. If you enjoyed this, please make sure to subscribe ready for next month's quick kit, and let us know what kit you're most excited about in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you.